Today I'm going to show you how to bend ionizing radiation with supermagnets. You can see the magnets in this lead case. It doesn't look very professional, but it does its job. And I'm also doing this on my floor, as you can see. And that's because the magnetic field is really strong. Let me show you. You probably remember this little neodymium supermagnet. And I'll just place it next to the big supermagnets and you can see the magnetic field is so large that the tiny magnet is greatly influenced from a distance of about 10-15 centimeters. And you can see that those magnets are really strong because I told you they are inside this lead casing which is kind of heavy. I'll just use some standard pliers and attach them and you can see I can just swing it around without it dropping off and move the other magnet. That is because each of these magnets can lift 27 kilograms. So they're rather strong. Not that strong. Some super magnets can carry a thousand kilos or something. Those are really dangerous because they can break your bones. But those are still, yeah, sort of okay to handle. So let's see what we can do with them. And for this experiment I'm going to use barium-133, which is a gamma emitter, and strontium-90, which is a beta emitter. And this will make all the difference in the world. So let's measure the strontium-90 source with the center. You can see where the hole is in here. That's for the radioactive material, the strontium-90 is. And, um, it's about 5 centimeters away from the opening of the dosimeter of my Gamma Scout. And you can see we reach about 0.7 something microsieverts, 0.9 even almost, just over 1. And below 1 again, random as usual. Let's place it away and measure the barium-133 same position with the center about 5 centimeters from the window and you can see we have yeah, a lot less 0.3 just, that's not much 0.6 Radioactivity is pretty random as you can see. Now this is the barium disk between the two supermagnets. It has the same distance to the window as you can see. Now we have 0.75 microsieverts. So pretty much the same. Let's flip it around, which will also flip the magnetic field around and place it in the same position again. And as you can see, there's nothing really changing all that much. Keep in mind that barium-133 is a gamma emitter. so. Let's take a look at strontium-90. Okay, this is the strontium-90. You can see distance 5 centimeters to the opening again. And we have about the same as with the measurement without the magnets. Magnets. Nothing really changed. These are random, so of course there are of course, um, a couple of fluctuations, but it's not a significant change. Now let's flip the magnetic field around. Whoa, what is happening? Well, quickly, quickly to reach over one microsievert. And you could hear the clicks increase as well. 0.3, 0.59. What the hell is going on? And the reason why this is happening 
with the strontium-90 is because the strontium-90 emits beta particles, as I said, and those are electrons. They are neg negatively charged particles. While the strontium-90, oh, sorry, the barium-133 emits gamma particles, uh, gamma rays, sorry, which are electromagnetic waves and consist of photons, which cannot be deflected with a magnetic field. And um, you may ask yourself if this works with alpha particles as well. Yes, it does indeed, because alpha particles are two protons and two neutrons. So as neutrons have no electrical charge and the protons have a positive electrical charge, um, the alpha particle will be deflected as well. And you guessed it, you probably guessed it, it will be deflected in the opposite direction as the beta particle. The problem is I cannot really demonstrate it to you with this because alpha radiation has such an ex extremely short range in air that it will be almost impossible to pick up any difference because yeah, the alpha particles will just have disappeared into thin air, sort of. They will continue their lives as little helium atoms and refuse to take part in my little experiment. Here's the strontium-90 again. Not much going on, but if I just flip it around... You can see another significant increase. And back. This is a summary of the experiment with an imaginary source that emits alpha, beta and gamma radiation. Such source could be uranium ore, for example. The source is shown as a black disk with a magnet surrounding it in pink. A positively charged alpha particle on the left side is deflected into one direction by the magnetic field, while the electron with its negative charge is uh, deflected into the other direction the opposite direction of the alpha particle, and the gamma rays are not influenced at all, same as X-rays would not be influenced at all, as they are both electromagnetic radiation or photons. Sorry about the bad speech today, um, I really should have been a good kid and taken my Ritalin. Sorry about that. I hope you enjoyed the video anyway, and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask.